Hey, my name is Miss Hendershaw, and I'm excited to be teaching your ninth or tenth grader in English one or two this year. Um, we have some safety procedures that we have in place in my classroom to keep your students safe and healthy um, while we can educate them as much as we would during a regular school year. So, um, of course, we have seating charts and we have procedures for turning in work, um, internet in the classroom. Um, to make sure that we have minimal contact between students and um, to make sure that not every student is touching every paper like we would if you turn in work. So we just all work in a basket um, to keep it hands free. We also have Germex and I'll wipe down the desk throughout the day. Okay, so a couple of goals that we have this year um, for our ninth graders in English 1. We have personal improvement plans. Um, which we established in class. And we also had district assessments, October, December, and March. So about quarterly, they align with the nine weeks test. Um, we'll be assessed by the district to see where we're at. Um, pretty similar for English two in 10th grade, we have personal improvement plans and district assessments. Um, we also have the MAP state test um, at the end of the school year for English two. So that's pretty significant that we need to remember. In addition um, to ninth grade, it says in the handbook that um, ninth graders may not be classified as a sophomore next year if they do not pass English 1. So that's pretty important right there. Um, and a quick look into how we're going to achieve these goals. We have things called Book Talk Books where students um, check out a book out of my personal library and um, they're required to read so many pages throughout the semester. We do AR. Student tracking and individual improvement plans, which I've touched on. I um, also post my notes and PowerPoints to Canvas. This is um, important if a student has missed class or um, on those AB days, it gets really confusing for students. So um, they're always able to look back to Canvas to see which notes we covered in class the day before. Um, also post practice quizzes to Canvas before tests so they can get on there and um, practice to study before the test. We're also blessed with Chromebooks in my classroom as well. Um, a couple of classroom goals that we have, each student is required to read 400 pages of young adult literature by May. This improves vocabulary and reading comprehension across the board, so this is also very influential in their other classes as well. Um, and each student will retest and improve at least two skills each semester. So um, all this means is, I mentioned that we reflect back on our past work, we'll take a couple of days out of class to do so. Um, and as we're reflecting, we see, oh, I need to improve this, or I have room for improvement here. Students are required to retest with me, um, and there's incentives and stuff with that as well. And ultimately, to pass the math for English to students. If you have any questions at all, please, please, please reach out to me. Um, I can't wait to talk to y'all and get to know you. Um, I'll be doing that through school status pretty soon, so um, watch out to hear from me. This is my email if you need it. Um, and my planning period is seventh period. Um, if you need a plan or if you need to come see me about anything, please call the office. Um, Ms. Bounce will be glad to set up an appointment with me during, these, during this time right here. Um, and your student is also highly, highly encouraged to sign up for Remind 101. I use this very often as reminders for homework, tests, things like that. Um, and I'm really excited to have a piece of your heart this year. They're very quickly becoming a piece of my heart. So I'm excited for a great school year and I can't wait to continue with your students. Hi, my name is Sheila Sanders. Um, I teach economics and government here at Scott Central. I am located in room six. Um, my email is ssanders at scott.k12.ms.us and my planning period is during the sixth period. Um, for a brief course overview, I'd like to tell you that U.S. government um, is taught in order to help students gain a comprehensive knowledge of American government. We will study the history of American government as well as how it works today. Uh, students will learn why having a government is important and how they can become an active citizen. In economics, the course uh, is geared toward giving students a greater understanding of ec economics ranging from the viewpoint of the individual, consumer, or small business owner to the global economy. The course relates history and politics to the study of economics. Uh, important facts about these courses that you should know as parents. 
First of all, these are required courses. They are necessary for graduation and they are not electives. Uh, each course is one semester in length. Students enrolled in government this semester will switch to economics after the Christmas break and vice versa. For many years, these courses were offered only to seniors. Last year, these classes were pushed down to the 10th grade level. Uh, the purpose for that change is the belief that students will benefit from learning about government and economics before they're required to take the U.S. History State Test. The format of my classes are taught uh, both very similarly. I provide students with a variety of resources. I provide them with guided reading questions or study guides to answer as they read the required content, chapter outlines and notes, activities to practice concepts, vocabulary review, and a project or two during the semester. Uh, students will earn daily grades from quizzes and other activities that they do in class. Uh, students are expected to read and answer questions from their textbooks at home, so they're prepared for class discussion and lecture. Uh, students are then assessed after we complete the study of a unit or of a chapter. Please ensure that your students are at school every day, uh, especially while we're on this abbreviated schedule, but actually at all times. Uh, at best, I'll see your students right now three times a week, and we are covering a lot of material. And so uh, anytime they miss, they are really missing a lot of work and a lot of instruction and a lot of things that they really need to be um, there in person to hear. Um, active parent. Um, if you're not already signed up, I urge you to register and obtain an Active Parent account. With um, Active Parent, you can uh, you access your um, students' grades at any time, and that way you're kept in the loop at all points. All you have to do to uh, go to it and get um, um, enrolled is to go to our website, uh, click on um, the uh, tab that says Parents, and then go down to Active Parent Login. And then follow the instructions under Create an Active Parent Account. It's very simple to do and it's well worth your time because you can really monitor the progress of your child at all times. I'm, I'm available uh, for any uh, conference or telephone conference or um, in any way that you would like to get in touch with me and talk to me, I'm available. You can call me uh, and, or call the office and set up a time to see me during my planning period. Or if you'd like to, you can just email me um, a message and I will reply to your message. Uh, thank you and I look forward to working with you and, and um, your child this year. Hey, I'm Ms. McDowell. I teach Advanced World Geography. 10th graders, 11th graders, and some seniors. And um, some of the required things that I need them to do is to bring a binder, some highlighters, colored pencils. We're going to be working with maps and things, and so we need some materials to do that with and to stay organized. I lecture. The students will also work in small groups. We'll do whole group discussions. We'll also debate topics. They'll do some research on real world issues in the world today. We'll view plenty of videos and they'll have plenty of map mapping activities to complete. And also we have new online course this year through Canvas. Most of the time their activities will be done at school. Sometimes they will have to work individually at home on their own computers. But so far all of my work has been paper and pencil. About this course, we talk about places on earth, how they're unique, how they're similar. We talk about migration and challenges in the folk culture and popular culture. We discuss languages and how languages have distributed across the earth and why some languages have not survived through time. We even talk about how religions are distributed across the world and ethnicities are also distributed all over the world. There's challenges with our business and industries and our farmers throughout the world. And we also discuss the difference between rural and urban, and we talk about our energy resources in the world, and many, many more topics. But that's just a small overview of what we'll do this year. It's a year-long course. The students will get one credit that they will complete 
and I look forward to having a great year with your students. If you need me for anything, of course, you can always send me an email or call the school on, during my planning period, and I'll be happy to talk with you if you have any questions. Thank you. My name is Pam Kennedy. I teach geometry and ACT prep. During this pandemic, education has to continue. In my classroom, my students are required to attempt every assignment and complete them to the best of their abilities. If for some reason they can't, or they're having problems doing some of the work, I'm providing my email address so that you can contact me. We're always looking for new ways to help during this pandemic. And if you have any ideas, please share them with me and I'll see how I can help your child the best way I can. Thank you. Hi, my name is Coach Shaw. I teach physical science here at Scott Central. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is our classroom rules. Okay, so the first thing, we just need to make sure we're class on time and make sure we complete all our assignments and we need to make sure that we respect everyone in the classroom. All right, with that being said, we're gonna move on to our required materials, okay? So we need, uh, we need to make sure we have a notebook or a binder, something to write in. We need pens and pencils, and we need to bring highlighters to class. All right, and now, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about my teaching methods. What I like, I like to, uh, I like to use lectures. I like to show videos that pertain to the information that we're going over. Okay, and then we do, uh, we'll be doing a lot of small group and some whole group things in class. And now we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the course. Okay, so the, um, one of the first things we're gonna cover is we're gonna learn uh, why things work the way they do, okay? And just the things that go behind the functions and just day-to-day -day life and how things work with one another to make things uh, functional. All right, and then the second thing is, can we be more efficient with resources and how we use them? All right, then after that, we're gonna, um, another big question is, have we tapped into all of Earth's natural resources? And then, is there a more efficient source of energy than natural resources? And lastly is, how do things in nature work together in order to meet our everyday needs as a society? All right, and, but that's just pretty much, that's the gist of what we're gonna be covering in this class, and I just look forward to working with, along with all my students.